Okay, so this is what we have so far for our actual game. Now, it's not too much. The game loop isn't really there. We don't really have any code working, but we have a very basic outline, and that's what's important that we got to here. Uh, if you run into any questions, you can always ask them in our Discord. Uh, myself or Chase, who also works with me, will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, if you go down to VS Code, open that back up, uh, this is where we're going to be coding for pretty much the entire time. We're going to be switching between the HTML, the JavaScript file, and adding stuff to it. So to get this to work, so that when we click on it, it actually increments up, we're going to need a couple things. First off, we're going to need IDs. IDs go in between the opening tag, but right after the actual tag name. So whether it's h1, whether it's button, whether it's something else, it's going to be right after the h1, right after the button tag, sorry about that, uh, right after the button tag, anything like that. So you're going to put a space after the h1 and make sure it's before the uh, greater than sign. So it needs to be inside of the tag, make sure it's exactly where my cursor is. You're going to type id equals and then two quotes. And don't put any spaces, it's just easier to have it uh, formatted the same way here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do wood dash heading. So you want to just name it something uniform that you're going to actually use. Uh, so I know this is the wood heading. Um, then for our button, we're going to put another id, have it equal, um, let's say wood dash btn for button. So that's going to be like the one we're clicking on. Uh, I use these two a lot, heading and button, just so I know how to break up my uh, IDs and I know what they are. So what is an ID? Well, an ID is just a link to the HTML line in the JavaScript. So that means that whatever is here in the H1 uh, is going to be able to link to the JavaScript with this keyword right here, wood heading and wood button. That's how you're going to link between the two. So if I want to change this wood to say like, well, first off, let's add a, a colon and then a zero. Save that. And let's look at the page and we reload it. So we see this. If I want the zero to move to one when I click chop tree, I'm going to need to reference this wood heading and change it myself. Now, Obviously, we're going to have the JavaScript code do that because you don't want to sit there while somebody's clicking it and actually increment it up. So let's go over to game.js and we can delete the console.test that we had before. You don't need that anymore. So let's start off with some kind of basics here. You want to comment your code. So you can comment your code two ways. You can either do two slashes or a slash and asterisk and then an asterisk and a slash. Um, th this one is for multiple lines. So if you want it to be a couple lines across the page, you do the asterisk one. Otherwise, you just do the two slashes. Now, what's the purpose of comments? Uh, comments are for yourself and for other developers, if they ever look at your code, um, so that they kind of know what's going on. And it's also for you, so you know what's going on. Now, you might say, hey, I coded it. I know what's going on. You probably don't, because you might have coded it for maybe you coded a lot for one night and then you wake up the next morning and you look at what you coded and you have literally no idea what any of it does I've done that like time and time again so you want to really quickly just comment what each part of your code is so that you can identify it quickly and then you can change what you need to change so once we have our comment I'm gonna write DOM variables and DOM variables are, it's, it's called the document object module. Uh, we're not going to get into that too much, but basically it's the, um, the link between our HTML and our JavaScript. So the DOM, the document object model, is uh, just the HTML. That's basically what it is, it's the HTML page. Um, it gets more complicated than that, it's like the JavaScript reference to that, but again, let's keep it simple. Um, these are just going to be our connection variables, basically. So in simple terms, it's our connection variables. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to write the word const. Um, you can write let if you want interchangeably, but that's not super important right now. Just write const. Const stands for constant, and it's a, uh, it's a JavaScript keyword. So it 
that means is JavaScript uh, essentially uh, has its own words that uh, it, ha it keeps like logged that do special things. So const helps make us the connection between the JavaScript and the HTML. So it's making a constant variable. Uh, a constant is just something that doesn't change. Um, so you always use the keyword const when you're starting these and then you're going to put a space and then another word. The second word is going to be whatever you're referencing. So wood heading. I'm going to write wood heading. Now you'll notice how I wrote it. I wrote wood heading with the first word lowercase and then the subsequent word, uh, just the first letter is going to be uppercase. So the reason for that is it's, this is called camel case and this is what we do in object oriented programming for it's like a naming convention. Uh, the reason you do it is so that when you have the same uniform naming convention like when all your variables are named the same way across your page if you run into any issues like you accidentally um, have the D capitalized uh, you'll be able to find that pretty quickly and then fix it because that's called a syntax error which means that you coded something wrong, which don't feel bad about it. I do it all the time. I'm bad at spelling. Uh, sometimes I just like mistype. So you'll run into those issues a lot. Um, but it's so that you can identify it easier. Regardless, once we have that, once you have const wood heading, you put an equal sign. So this side, the left side, is going to be declaration. So const wood heading, that's declaring that we have a variable named wood heading and we're setting it equal to something. Here's where this comes in. You're going to write the word document. Document is going to be your HTML document. Then you're going to put a dot. We're going to use what's called query selector. So you're going to type it out just like that. You can click on it. That's not the one we wanted to click on. Um, here, let me look through that again. Click on the second one. Uh, that'll finish it for you if you need it to. You're going to put two parentheses and then two um, quotes. These two quotes are going to give you the ability to actually reference uh, the HTML version to the JavaScript version. So that's our connection that we've been talking about. So we're going to take wood heading right here and I just copied and pasted it so I make sure that I don't uh, type it wrong and I'm going to paste wood heading between our quotes. And then finally you finish the line with a semicolon. For good practice, you're going to finish every line you write of JavaScript with a semicolon. There's a couple exceptions. There's like two exceptions. Uh, I'll explain those as we go. But for 99% of the code you're doing, write a semicolon. It's good practice and it helps you get comfortable with like closing out a line of code. So now we have a reference to our wood heading. We're going to need one more reference. We're going to need a reference to the button. So I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to paste it below. I'm going to change heading to wood btn. And remember, keep a camel case. Then, instead of wood heading, in our reference, I'm going to use wood btn for wood button. And you'll notice that like, as the naming convention goes, all my stuff is named the same compared to what it is. So all the IDs are just like two words, no capitals, uh, with a hyphen between. And then all the JavaScript variables on the left side are all camel case. So now we have our references. Uh, we're going to need a little bit more to get this to work. So right now, if we went to the page, uh, you won't actually see any differences. Even if you save it, nothing's happening. We just made the references. We didn't change anything. So what you want to do, another comment, and write uh, the word variables. So these are going to be, or even game variables. Our game variables are going to be the variables that we use for our game. Um, we can start off with the word let. Let is another JavaScript keyword. So let is going to let us make a variable. So use let and then you're going to name it something. Let's call it wood. So let wood equal zero, which means we're going to start off with zero of the wood resource. And then that's it for uh, the variables. One more thing. Sorry, one more comment. We're going to add an event listener. So what is an event listener? Uh, an event listener is basically a little piece of code that sits on top of something on your website 
and waits for an action to happen and then does something else. Now, what does that mean? So let's say we add an event listener to our chop tree button. It's going to wait for the event type click. Once we click on it, it's going to do something else. So it's going to sit on the button. Once you click it, it's going to say, OK, computer, run this. Uh, and the function it's going to run, in our case, is going to be increment up. So add one to this uh, resource. So that's what we want the event listener to do. So what you're going to do is you need to grab wood button. And to grab it, uh, you just type in wood button dot add event listener. So this is going to add that event listener I was talking about. It's going to put an event listener on top of the button. You're going to need two parentheses after that to make this work. You can put a semicolon at the end if you'd like. Um, inside of the parentheses, you're going to put two quotes. Inside the quotes, you're going to put the word click. That's the event we're listening for. There's a bunch of events you can do. You can listen for like spacebar press, you can listen for double click, you can listen for mouse over, which means like putting your mouse over it. Um, tons of stuff. But for now, and for most of the game, you're just going to look for click. Uh, some new idle games have been using mouse over for what I've been seeing, but I don't really like that mechanic a lot. Um, if you want to do it, you just do mouse over like that. But I vastly prefer click, so that's what I'm going to use. After this second quotation mark, um, you're going to put a comma, and then you're going to write the word function, and then you're going to put two more parentheses, and then two uh, brackets. Now, this is the old way that we used to make functions. I'm going to do the new way, but I just wanted to show you this is the old way we used to do it, and this is the new way. So. If you want to make a new function, like this is called ES6. So ES6 is the new JavaScript. It's like ECMAScript 6. Um, you're going to put two parentheses, an equal sign, a, uh, a greater than sign to make like an arrow pointing, and then two curly brackets. And that's what the whole thing's going to be. So it needs to look exactly like this. So what this is saying is have the event click on the button, and then Sorry about that, uh, my mic cut out. Um, this part is going to be the function, and this left part is going to be the event list, like the type of event that we're doing. So it's going to say um, click. So like whenever we click on it, we're going to run this function. Now, the function is inside of these brackets. So this will pretty much stay the same. Uh, these parentheses are for what we call parameters, but we'll worry about that later. For now, we're going to make the code uh, work inside of these two um, curly brackets. So you can click enter inside of them, and then uh, we'll actually code out what we're going to do. So what do we want to do? We want to increment up. So we want to say wood plus equals one. And then after that, we want to do, um, let's see, we'll do wood heading dot enter html equals two backticks so backticks are something you might not have seen um, backticks are going to be right where the tilde key is that's going to be like top left of your keyboard the little squiggly um, just click that button you get two backticks inside of here we're going to write the word wood with a colon a money sign two curly braces and then we're going to put the word wood in it now we just did a lot so i'm going to break that down line by line first off we wrote the word wood so what's wood what is our game variable so that's our javascript variable that's a number now what's plus equals do plus equals just adds that's all it is this is just adding to the old value so if the old value is 10 it's going to say plus equals one well 10 plus one equals 11. that's all it's doing um, so it's going to say 0 plus 1, we got 1 now. That's all this line does. The next line. The next line goes into wood heading. So it goes into the HTML, it gets this wood heading, where it says the word wood. So if you want to look on the actual page, it's, uh, it's this wood right here. So it gets this heading. And it's going to update the inner HTML. Uh, inner HTML, uh, just note, is lowercase for inner, and then HTML is all capitalized. 
Uh, inner HTML is going to be this right here. It's like all the HTML code that's written on that line. So it's going to go into inner HTML and then it's going to add this. So the back ticks are just for the text uh, that's going inside of it. So that's just like containers, sort of. Wood and the colon, anything green, is going to be the actual words that get displayed. So as you can see here, we have wood with the colon already. That's the same. And then finally, we have this fancy thing right here. So the money sign and then the two uh, curly brackets are what is going to surround a game variable. So that's this game variable right here. So surrounding a number. This is so we can display this number that we're using, this JavaScript number, as a word. So on its own, it won't just pop up. So this is an easy way to display the number and have it increment up on the screen. So that's what this variable right here is. Now, at this point, if you click chop tree, it doesn't work. It does not work. Okay, let's see what we did wrong. Um, if wooden button dot add event listener. Okay, so let, this is a good uh, example because now we're going to go through some debugging. Um, we need to figure out what did we do wrong. Uh, the first thing when you figure something out what you did wrong, well, first you test it out. It's not working. So first place I look is I right click the page, I click inspect, and I go to console. I'm like, okay, there's no errors. Sometimes errors will pop up in the console. Uh, right now I don't see any, so we have a problem. Um, we have wood heading here, so I'm just going to check all my references. Uh, let's see, so we have wood heading. Ah, here's a problem. In our query selectors, we need to put um, hashtags. Hashtags are for IDs. That's my bad. Um, make sure that you do that. So go back. For both of these, you're going to put a hashtag before you write the word, and that's going to grab an ID. Uh, there's different ones if you're grabbing like a class and so forth, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Just make sure you put hashtags in front of it. At this point, I uh, might need to reload the page. There we go. Okay. So I saved it, reload the page, and now we see our number increment up. So now we have a very simple incremental game with a, a terrible mechanic, which is just clicking all day, and it's not very fun. So in the next one, we'll expand on this and do a little bit more. Uh, thanks, and have a good rest of your day.